Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, we're going to pray some more, but I want you to take your mind back to last Sunday. All right, as that was rounding up his teaching, he showed us how sentiments can stand in the way of following the voice of God. And he took us to the book of Acts, the story of in 2, Acts chapter 20, verse 22. The Bible tells us how he told the disciples that he was going to Jerusalem for a reason. That is for the preaching of the gospel. And he said, and now you see, I'm going to Jerusalem bound by the Holy Spirit and obligated and compelled by the convictions of my own spirit, not knowing what will befall me there, except that the Holy Spirit clearly and emphatically affirms to me in city after city that imprisonment and sufferings await me. But he said in verse 24, he says, none of these things move me. Neither do I esteem my life dear to myself, if only I may finish my course with joy and the ministry which I've obtained, from which was entrusted to me by the Lord Jesus, faithfully to attest to the good news, the gospel of God's grace, is unmerited favor, spiritual blessing, and mercy. And he says, and now observe, I perceive that all of you among whom I have gone in and out proclaiming the kingdom will see my face no more. Now when the disciples heard from him, they became emotional and sentimental in the next chapter. Acts chapter 21 verse 4. The Bible says, And having looked up the disciples there, we remained with them for seven days, prompted by the Holy Spirit. It says they kept telling Paul not to set foot in Jerusalem. Now the prompting of the Holy Ghost there was to prepare them for what was going to happen, not for them to prevent him from doing the will of God. And some of us under the sound of my voice, we are probably in that place. You know the will of God for your life. You know the things that God has said to you. But the people that love you, they don't want you to fulfill the plan of God because of sentiments. They didn't want to lose him because he had told them that they might not see him anymore. They became emotional. In verse 11, you will see how there was even a prophecy that came forth from prophet Agabus. He says, and coming to see us, he took Paul's bets and with it bound his own feet and hands and said, thus saith the Holy Spirit, the Jews at Jerusalem shall bind like this, the man who owns this belt, and they shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. The stuff says, when we heard this, both we and the residents of that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. But I like the response of Apostle Paul in verse 30. He says, then Paul replied, what do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart like this? For I hold myself in readiness not only to be arrested and bound and imprisoned at Jerusalem, but also he would die for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would yield to their persuasion, the Bible says they stopped urging and imploring him, saying the Lord's will be done. You know, you're going to pray for yourself this morning against early sentiments that wants to hold you down and hold you back from fulfilling the plan of God for your life. Some of these sentiments will come on the altar of love. The love and the care of those that are close to you. It may be your parents. It may be friends. It may be loved ones. Anybody, anything that will rise up in the name of the Lord to say they don't want you to go forth to fulfill the plan of God. It takes strength and boldness to see all the weeping and the crying and yet stand your ground in your convictions to say no. I will do the will of God. No matter how you feel, I will do the will of God. I will do the will of God. It may not sound interesting because he was going to go through persecutions and afflictions for the sake of the gospel. But in Acts 26, he knew, he had known from the beginning, God had spoken to him that that was going to be his experience. So when he was reporting it, he said that, but God would deliver me out of every single one of them. So he was already in a place of conviction. But here comes the sentiments. It takes strength and boldness. And these are two things you can pray for. The Bible makes provision for you to pray for strength. That you should be strengthened with might by the Spirit of God in your inner man. That we should be strengthened with all might according to God's glorious power. Unto all patience and long suffering with, with joyfulness. You can pray for strength. And you need strength. I'm sure you've heard that share with you over time. How that because he wanted to serve God. 
they stopped giving him money for transport at home. And he had to be trekking to church. Trekking day in, day out. It's not convenient, is it? It's not. It's not. I know someone in this church who gets beaten every Sunday because she comes to church. I've gone through my own fair share of persecution. My dad never wanted me to join this ministry from day one. He wanted me to join the fellowship of his home church. Is that not sentimental? The sentiment of this is our home church. So I want you to continue there. But I had come across lights. And I was not going to let anything take it away from me. There were Sundays that I would dread this call. Because he would call me every Sunday to ask where did you go on Sunday. And those were not sweet things. Those were not sweet calls every Sunday. But I stood my ground. If I did not stand strong in my conviction I won't be here today. Dad will not be here today. There's somewhere that God wants you to be in the future. And now you need to stand strong in the things that you believe. So whatever your case may be, I want you to open your heart, lift up your voice and pray now for strength, for boldness, to stand strong in your conviction that you will rise above every sentiment. Your own may not be your coming to church. It may be you acting on a divine leading. Probably God is leading you to go along a particular path. But the people around you will not let you. They come in the voice of Peter saying, Jesus, you're not going to die. But you're going to have to say, get thee behind me, Satan. I will go to the cross. Because if I don't go to the cross, there will be no salvation of men. If I don't go bound to Jerusalem, there will be no fulfillment of the plan of God. There will, no be, there will be no epistles for us to read today. There will be no preaching of the gospel. There will be no saving of souls. Something great is at stake. And you need to pray for yourself this morning that you will rise above every sentiment. They will come in the name of we care for you, we love you. We don't want you to be hurt. We don't want you to suffer. We don't want you to be pained. We don't, but if there is no pain, there will be no gain. If there is no pain, there will be no gain. If there is no dying on the cross, there will be no salvation of souls. There will be no deliverance from sin. There will be no forgiveness of sin. There will be no gift of eternal life. So lift up your voice and pray for yourself in the name of Jesus that I'm strengthened with might by the Spirit of God in my inner man. In the name of Jesus, I'm strengthened with all might according to God's glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. In the name of Jesus, I receive a fresh supply of strength to stand strong in my convictions, to stand strong in the things that I believe, to stand strong in the leading of God, to stand strong in the divine direction that God is showing me, the things He's instructing me to do. Some of you, you may not be facing challenges now. Maybe there's something waiting for you in the future. That this warning is coming, this instruction, this opportunity is coming to you now to prepare. To prepare yourself ahead to get fortified in your spirit man that no matter what it is no matter the opposition in the name of jesus no matter what it is that rises up against me as a wall or as a mountain that i'm going to jump over it that i'm going to run through a troop and i'm going to leap over the walls in the name of jesus come and pray for yourself now for some of you it is the cares of this world the cares of life that is holding you down holding you back from walking into the fulfillment of God's plan for your life the need to make money the need to do this they need to do that but I'm telling you this morning there's nothing that is more important than your ministry there's nothing when we stand before the Lord Jesus at the end of this race he's not going to ask you about those things he's going to ask you about your ministry so will you be able to stand before the Father to say that I've finished my course and I've run my race and I've fulfilled the ministry that the Lord Jesus has committed into my hands are you going to be able to stand before God to say that are you going to be able to stand and receive a reward for the things that you did for him pertaining to his kingdom? Come and pray for yourself and break free and break loose from every sentiment 
from every sentiment in the name of Jesus. Mande kala sota, yepre doson di yakita la rabasha, repoto son di kaliandos, esi badi akatombo di atamashata, lepre doso mate kati kata. Anything that holds you back, a way of thinking, an imagination that just doesn't see that you don't see yourself in the light of the fulfillment of God's plan for your life. You need to break free from it now. You need to set yourself loose. Yes, the cobra tande rise above every sentiment, rise above those entanglements. In the name of Jesus. Rise above it and fulfill your ministry. Rise above it and walk in the plan of God for your life. In the name of Jesus, Mendorata Makatese, receive boldness this morning. A fresh supply of boldness, a fresh dose of strength, strength on the inside, strength in your convictions. They will come around. Don't worry. You, those people will come around. Your parents will come around, I tell you. The disciples came around. At the end of the day, they said, let the will of God be done. In spite of their tears, they came to a place where they said, let the will of God be done. Oh, man, they retoso kata. Ye pre tu zombri da ki andala rabosha. Ye zimbre no posateya. Reketo sombarata. If there is no pain, there will be no gain. The Bible says concerning our Lord Jesus Christ that who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame and is right now seated at the right hand of the Father. There is a destination for you in Christ and it's a glorious destiny. Don't sacrifice it on the altar of convenience. Don't sacrifice it on the altar of pleasure. Don't sacrifice it on the altar of what is convenient for you and comfortable for you now. It's time to rise above it. Rafa seketele rebosha. It's time to rise above it. Rise above every limitation in the name of Jesus. Receive strength. Receive strength in the name of Jesus. In any way that your conviction has been weakening, I pray for you. Receive a fresh supply of strength. A fresh supply of boldness, courage to stand in the face of opposition, to stand in the face of limitation in the name of Jesus and to stand your ground and say, I will do the will of God. I will do the will of God. I will go to where God is sending me. I will do what He's asking me to do in the name of Jesus. Oh, Mandela Rabba Shetela Rabosa. Yakate ya bariatosa. Yetusha do ya katabaha. There's no higher calling than the calling of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's no greater joy than to fulfill the will of God, I tell you. There's no greater joy than to stand before the Father and say that I finished my course. Don't let anything rob you of that. Don't let anyone prevent you from that. Don't let anyone prevent you from your reward. God is not going to ask him any question. He's going to ask you. He's going to ask you, what did you do with that divine instruction? What did you do with the leading? What did you do with the instructions? What did you do with the light that he exposed your heart to? What did you do with it? Are you going to stand the test? Are you going to leap over the walls? Are you going to run through the troops? So that you can do the will of God. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you because everyone under the sound of my voice is energized in the spirit. You are strengthened in the name of Jesus. No weakness in your heart. No weakness in your convictions. As you have started on this path of fulfillment, you will continue on the path. You will not fall away. You will finish your course in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.